warm welcome to the snowflake sql video series and my channel data engineering simplified in this episode 5 we will continue our discussion around context function and we'll see two session context function in action and how they can be used for different purpose we all know the context functions are very powerful in snowflake but not used as frequently as expected we have already covered 19 context function in our previous episode refer the card above for the playlist link so let's start so here is a complete list of context function and out of these context function 19 context function have already been discussed in this video we will primarily focus two context function named current transaction and last transaction both of them fall under a session context where can i find sql script used in this video series all the sql script used in each chapter is available in my website the link is given below where can I find Snowflake documentation? The Snowflake documentation is available in the docs.snowflake.com and all the context function with their references are available there. So let's jump and understand the context function definition as per Snowflake documentation. The syntax for current transaction is current underscore transaction and ANSI is not supported, which means that you have to use this context function along with bracket. It returns the transaction ID of an open transaction in the current session. Again, the last transaction also does not support the ANSI syntax. It has to be used with the bracket. And this function returns the transaction ID of the last transaction that was either committed or rolled back in the current session. We have understood in the previous chapter how exactly you have to use a current session. When we establish a connection with the Snowflake, each worksheet is a separate session and your transaction comes under the worksheet. So let's jump into the live demo. We will use Snowflake free trial edition to exercise the SQL scripts. So here I am using my legacy web UI and I have opened a worksheet. First of all, I switch my role to an ETL developer role. I would like to check my current context for this worksheet. So here it says that this is my current session. Let's begin the transaction and how you can begin the transaction in Snowflake. You can write the keyword called begin followed by the word transaction. Alternatively, you can also use the word work followed by the name and you have to give the name of the transaction. Now I am starting a transaction here. Let me create a simple table and I would like to draw up the table first just to make sure that the table doesn't exist. I have created a table called TX1. So my transaction is running and I go here and roll back my transaction. Once my transaction is rolled back, I can safely assume that my table should not exist, but that is not the case. Even after commit or roll back, the roll back only roll backs the DML statement, not the DDL statement. So when I run this statement, it still shows me the table. And I can select a statement and I can select from the table. And since I have not put any data set, it brings zero result. So let's insert a record within a transaction. And I would like to show how the transaction work in Snowflake before I really jump into those context functions. So I started a transaction called uh, insert transaction. I am running the insert operation and let's see how does it look like. I got one result. Now let me perform this context function where I can say select my current transaction and let's see what result does it bring. So here it brings the transaction ID which includes up to millisecond information. Now if I roll back, now the rollback has been successful. Now the data should not exist. So when I run the select statement, I did not get any data. And that is what the behavior I expect from the Snowflake, which is working fine. Now, what if I run the current transaction? This gives me a null value because right now there is no transaction going on and I have not explicitly initiated any transaction. So this is how the transaction works within the Snowflake. And this is how you can use the current transaction function. Now, if I use last transaction, Let's see what result does it bring. So it brought the result, the last transaction. 
So this is how this two context function works. If you have not started any transaction explicitly, the current transaction always return null value. However, if you run last transaction, the last committed or rollback transaction ID will come as a result. Let's see how the multi-level transaction works in Snowflake. Since Snowflake does not support multi-level transaction, I just wanted to show the behavior here and how we can use the current transaction to see the result. So here, here I'm starting a new transaction called level one. Now I'm going to, I'm inserting a record called level one. Before I check my current transaction, I would like to see the result. This is the result. And let's see what is the current transaction ID. So this is my current transaction ID. I'm starting a new transaction named level two. And uh, Snowflake does not return any error saying that I, I am already having a transaction so I cannot start another transaction. It safely execute this transaction. And uh, I'm going to run another statement and this insert another record. Let me see how many record does it have. So I have two record, level one and level two, perfectly fine. Let's check what is the transaction ID here. When I select it, it is still showing the same result. I assume that I am running in a multi-level transaction. However, Snowflake does not support multi-level transaction. So if you start a transaction in this way through a worksheet where your first transaction is already running and you start another transaction, it does not change the transaction ID. It is still within the same transaction. Let's verify once again with another function called uh, show transaction. This is another way that you can find all the transaction through this active session as well as through this user ID. What I see here, this transaction is still the same transaction ID. I'm still in the level one transaction. My statement begin transaction level two really did not do anything for me. So this is one of the specific behavior you can see within the snowflake. However, if you are using the stored procedures, that behavior is very different and I'm going to capture that behavior in a different video. Let's roll back this transaction. And now if I try to run this command, so you see my transaction is null. If I run this statement, I can see that this transaction is matching with this transaction. However, my current transaction is null. We have seen show transaction. Now there is no transaction running. You can see that I do not get any result. If I have a right privileges, I can still check all the transaction within my account. If the transaction has acquired any lock, I can run this show locks and fetch all the locks which are currently active within the session. If you have to list all the transaction, you can use the show transaction and this will list all the active transaction. This command can be used to show transaction for the current user or all the user in the account according to your privileges. What if you have to really do something more using this show transaction, you can use the result scan table. For that, let me start a transaction first. So I started this transaction again and I am inserting a record here again, just to make sure that this transaction is running. And yeah, I can see the transaction is running. Now I perform show transaction command. I'm going to run it using the result scan and refer the description section to see how the result scan and last query ID works. So this is how the result comes. If, if I'm using the result scan function, which translate my result into a table. So if I started a transaction, can any other user see my transaction? Let's also try that. Before I start checking uh, the transaction, I would like to see if any transactions are running. So no, no transactions are running. When I say show transactions, okay. Uh, so there is no transaction. I start a transaction called TX visibility and I run show transaction. Yes, I can see TX visibility. So here I'm starting a transaction called demo TX. I ran the transaction. This transaction is running perfectly fine. I go to my previous worksheet and here I again run show transaction. And here is a result. I can see two transaction. One is called transaction TX visibility. Another is called demo TX. This demo TX is running from the other worksheet and transaction visibility is running from this worksheet. Uh, association of the session. So this is how the session and the transaction works under each other. I would like to verify if my transaction is visible to other user. So here I logged in with a user called read-only user. 
uh, and let me run show transaction command. Show transaction command does not need any warehouse, so I don't get any result because this is a completely different user. So my transaction is completely isolated. And if I run current transaction, so I got a null. Now I can come here and I can safely commit and let's validate the result again. So I got all my record and which is perfectly fine. So we have seen how the current transaction and the last transaction really works. Now the question is that how can I use it? Let's look into the session views and query history views which we have seen in our first episode. As you know, to see the account usage database, I have to switch my role to the account admin. When I switch my role to the account admin, I go to the account usage schema and here I try to see the session tables. So when I go to the session table and preview the data, I don't see any field which talks about the transaction ID. At the same time, transactions are applicable at query level, right? So if I go to the query history, so let's go to the query history. So if I look into the query history, it also does not have any field called transaction. It only has a field called transaction block time. And let me show that. So this is called transaction block time. Other than that, in the entire views under the account usage schema, you will not find transaction ID. So how can I use the transaction ID if I have to analyze at later point of time? And in that case, this two function comes handy where you can really use the current transaction and the last transaction whenever you are building an ETL solution using a stored procedure or any other mechanism. I hope this information will help you to build a right use case for your data solution. Thank you for watching this series. For those of you who are visiting my channel first time, I request you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and press the bell icon to get the notifications. If this content is meaningful and helping you in your day-to-day -day work, press the like button and also share your feedback via comment section. And yes, before you leave, if you are benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share your story in the link down below.